Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Russell Matthews here, and you probably already know that there's a huge conflict going on right now about CERB repayment, where many Canadians are being forced to pay back up to $14,000 of the benefit they received. And it all has to do with one specific eligibility requirement for this benefit. Now the conflict comes in because some people are saying that now the government has changed the rules retroactively, making some people not eligible when they would have been other under the previous rules. And now, there's a whole bunch of new information regarding this topic, so I needed to bring it to you as quickly as possible. There was a potential for an emergency debate, we're going to talk about that. Also, there was a letter that was directed to Canadians who were concerned about this issue. And finally, we're going to talk about some evidence that has come to light that sort of may prove that uh, the rules have changed now versus what they were back in March when this was all announced. So that's exactly what we're going to talk about in today's video, because if you follow this channel, you know the whole goal is to bring information to Canadians as quickly and as accurately as possible so that they can set themselves up to live a more financially stable future. So if that sounds good to you, make sure to hit all those buttons down there, subscribe, notification bell, all that good stuff. Now let's get into this new information. If you didn't already have a chance to watch my previous video where I go into the details of exactly what requirements may be changing and who could be required to pay this back, you're going to want to check out that video. I'm going to link it down there in the description. But to summarize, in order to get the CERB, you had to have made $5,000 last year. Now, the conflict comes in when you start wondering, hey, was that $5,000 before or after expenses? It seems that they didn't really make it all that clear on the CRA website. So some people applied thinking that they were eligible. And now the CRA is saying, hey, no, you have to use your net income or your income minus expenses. And if you didn't cross that threshold, you've got to pay back this $14,000. And this all started with a CTV News article that was put up on their website. And since that first video was created, now many other news sources have picked up the story and have also reported on the same sort of thing going on. And as a result, there's been some more attention from the political parties. And the first one was the Green Party, who came out and said that people should not be having to pay this back, especially during the uh, sort of holiday season. Let's go listen to what the lead of the Green Party said about this. Now, we all know that in the early days of the, uh, of the uh, pandemic, the decision was made across party lines, and rightly so, that the uh, Can Canadian um, um, Emergency Response Benefit should be available quickly. Um, it should be available quickly, and we should make sure that people do not fall through the cracks and that they had the help they needed as quickly as possible. We need to see people through all the way through, and we are not through this yet. And so what we are asking for, very simply, and we're, we're, we're approaching this again in good feel, goodwill and good faith, uh, we are asking the government to please suspend uh, these uh, demands for repayments until the new year and until uh, the Canada Revenue Agency has the opportunity to propose a much better, much more compassionate plan that reflects uh, that there was reasonable misunderstanding of what some of the provisions and eligibility requirements were for the CERB. Okay, so there's the request that they want to um, delay these payments until the new year. So this is a little bit of an interesting response. It seems that the Green Party isn't really saying, hey, requirements have changed, this isn't fair. But what they're saying is the timing of it isn't fair and that people should only have to pay this in the new year after the holidays are over. And also, this is interesting because I think there might be some sort of misunderstanding going on. I believe on that message that was sent to people or that um, letter that they were sent, they said that they wanted this paid back by December 31st so that they didn't give you an erroneous uh, tax slip or a tax slip that had wrong information on it. Uh, it seems that uh, this isn't like a hard deadline for paying this back. It's rather something to make life easier for the CRA so they don't have to go back and uh, change things on what you owe tax-wise based on these benefits. But all in all, that's an interesting take from the Green Party because they're not saying that anything wrong happened. They're just saying that this should be paused and dealt with later. But that's very different from what the NDP came out and said just afterwards. After doing a little bit of digging, I found this email that Jagmeet Singh, the leader of the NDP, sent out to people who wrote to him or other MPs about this issue. Let's take a look at it. 
So let's extract the main points from this letter. First off, Jagmeet says that I'll continue to support all individuals who applied for pandemic benefits in good faith, but are now facing severe financial penalties. Then he talks about how the liberals originally said, those who have applied in good faith for and received benefits through CERB or other programs to support them through this crisis will not be unjustly penalized. But now, instead of honoring their commitment, they're allowing stiff penalties to be charged against Canadians already struggling to make ends meet during this national health crisis. So this section right here where it says unjustly penalized, this is a little bit subjective, right? Originally, the idea was that if people applied and they were later found to be ineligible, they wouldn't have to pay any interest on this money. Um, they'd just have to pay it back. But now it seems that people are interpreting it in this way that uh, if you were to apply in good faith, then you shouldn't have to pay it back at all. Or at, last, at least that seems where the narrative is going right now. Now, there's no saying which one is correct at this point. This is just the information I'm bringing you. Then he talks about how a member of the parliament in the House of Commons actually requested that there be an emergency debate on the decision to claw back these much needed CERB slash CRB benefits. Um, and so that in actually in the House of Commons, they can talk about and discuss this issue. Now, this is something that was presented to the, um, the Speaker of the House who would have to make this decision on whether or not there would be an emergency debate. So this is the actual recording from the House of Commons where this MP is requesting this emergency de debate about this topic. Let's listen in. So why is it that we need an emergency debate on this? Well, we need an emergency debate because there's a December 31st deadline looming for these large repayments that people had no idea the Canada Revenue Agency was going to come after them for. It was reported by the CBC on Saturday, December 5th. The last supply day, the last opposition day, was that Monday, Mr. Speaker, which really wasn't a lot of turnaround time. It meant that only one party had a supply day and on very short notice after, after this came to light, which means Parliament really hasn't had an opportunity to talk about this. And given that the House of Commons took a very strong position on the issue of CERB repayments, and the government seems to have changed its policy direction, I think it's important that Parliament have the opportunity to pronounce on that change in, uh, in uh, direction. And I would add, Mr. Speaker, that if we don't have this debate now with the House set to rise tomorrow and not come back until the end of January, it'll be a very long time indeed before members have an opportunity to try and get this matter before the House and get the attention of government on this and try and provide some direction, frankly, from Parliament on this, because the way the government is behaving is not consistent with the unanimous consent motion that passed in the House of Commons. So I think there is a, there's a great need on the part of uh, Canadians. It affects potentially a lot of Canadians. Almost 9 million Canadians availed themselves of the help that was that was there through CERB at some point during the uh, pandemic. So it affects a lot of people. And there's a deadline of December 31st. So I think it's something the House absolutely needs to take up today. Thank you. Yeah, so that's the main point that he's making. And it's a little bit interesting and some new information. So he's calling for an emergency debate to be had about this because uh, the House of Commons or the other political parties other than the Liberals haven't really had an opportunity to voice their concerns about this issue. And based on the schedule of the House of Commons, they may not get an opportunity to. And he's also saying that the House of Commons will pause and it may not come back until mid-January. Maybe this is due to the holidays. But it seems like he's trying to get this emergency debate happening so that there's actually some discussion about the issue. And as we go back to this letter, we find out that, uh, regrettably, this NP's request was denied. And then they go on to say that they're going to still continue to challenge the Liberals' CERB clawback and demand that the Trudeau government provide the following assurances. Now, remember, they say they're going to keep fighting for this, but they may not have an opportunity to with the House of Commons sort of going on break here very soon. But they say they're going to fight for individual individuals who applied in good faith um, and that they shouldn't have to repay the benefits and that small business owners, self-employed individuals who took massive income hits and applied for the CERB in good faith will also not be persecuted um, and people who are already living below that poverty line and were in need of the CERB help will not be persecuted. Um, they're looking to talk more about this gross income $5,000 and how that should be what is used, gross income, not net income for 
CERB eligibility, and they want to have a payment plan um, that allows for a more gradual payback. This is something that the CRA already has in place, but maybe they want to sort of fine tune this um, along with these other uh, points where they're saying, hey, real fraudsters who encouraged people to apply fraudulently and then took a cut from those people, those are the real people who should be penalized. And I tend to agree with that last point at least. So that's where things stand as of right now. This request for an emergency debate was denied. So in the House of Commons, they're not going to really talk about this issue for the time being. But interestingly enough, some new information has come out as people have sort of scoured the previous records and trying to find out, hey, did they ever say net income or did they say gross income? Hey, there's actually a clip here from the former finance minister, Bill Morneau, where he says exactly the opposite of what they're saying now. Let's listen in. So this is from a CBC story that was posted all the way back in March. I think it was on March 26th. So this was just when the CERB was first coming out. We were learning details about this, and I think you'll be interested in the language that he uses to describe who could be eligible. Every Canadian that finds themselves in a situation where they've, they've earned revenue in revenue? the past 12 months of $5,000 or more, and they don't have any income as a result of COVID-19, they can get this benefit. That's key. So the key word there that he used was revenue. Now, when you say revenue, that doesn't mean your uh, net income. Revenue is uh, uh, implying gross income, which is exactly the opposite of what the liberals are saying is the policy now that you needed to have a net income of $5,000. That wouldn't be revenue. They would have just said net income. Now, to be fair, people can slip up and people can use the wrong words. So that could have been something that happened here, but it is at least evidence enough that there was some miscommunication about this and the messaging that was sent out to Canadians was certainly unclear as um, these people who are in these positions of power, Bill Morneau, the finance minister, he's even sort of blundering which one it is. Is it net income? Is it gross income? Is it revenue? Is it just your profit? Right? The messaging wasn't clear and I think that's the key point here. But that's where things stand right now and those are all of the most important updates that have happened with this story. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like there's been much progress forward in terms of sort of changing the ruling that the CRA is going with in that uh, people are going to have to pay back this $14,000. Now I have seen some petitions circling and um, lots of groups advocating for a change. Of course we see the support here that I've talked about in this video from the NDP and they say they're going to keep fighting for this so we'll see how this uh, how this goes in the future. I'm definitely thinking there will be more updates just like this one coming. So if you want to stay up to date with a exactly what's happening here, then make sure to hit those buttons down there, subscribe, notification bell. I'm constantly bringing updates just like this one, and um, also information about how people can sort of help themselves to save and invest to help themselves live a more financially stable future. So you're going to want to stay tuned for updates like this and also some tips and tricks like that. And of course, I want to hear what you think about all this. I sort of use my comment section as a way to keep my finger on the pulse of what people are thinking about these topics. And I try to read every single comment. So if you want your voice to be heard, make sure to drop a comment down there. And while you're down there, also hit that like button and turn it blue, because when you do, this video gets spread to people who wouldn't have otherwise seen it. And if you think this video is valuable, valuable then it might be a good idea to spread it to more people. And with all of that said, thank you so much everybody for watching. I really hope this video has helped keep you up to date with exactly what's going on and I'll see you next time.